on how to replace a broken cable on an AT250. Um, from time to time, over years, you may have uh, some issue with uh, the little clamp here uh, with the wire getting pulled out because the clamp became uh, loose or something, or uh, something has cut your cable. Um, so we're going to go through this 250 step by step on how to replace uh, the cable. The first step what we want to do is remove the main spring to make the traps safe. So the first step to doing that is uh, turn your machine on to the cocked position by flipping your toggle switch off, having it hooked up to the battery, and then put your toggle switch in the down position. Press the firing button one time. It's going to fire and not recock itself. And now we're going to completely take out the spring by backing off this blue knob and then removing the spring. So now I'm going to unhook it from the battery and I will start undoing this blue knob to get the spring out. spring out now we can safely work on the trap now that your machine has the spring out we can safely work on it without risk of injury um, we are going to want to access this portion the front portion of the cable that has it looks like this uh, so if you follow this cable up here and the attachment point is on this uh, arm right here and it takes a 532nd Allen to remove this stripper bolt. Uh, but the easiest way to get to that is we're actually going to hook the machine up to power and we're going to run the motor so that it's gonna be in an easier spot for us to access. So I've got the machine hooked up to power. The main spring is out so it's not gonna fire. Um, so this will allow us to manipulate this arm, bringing it forward so we can easily get to that Allen. Uh, so toggle switch down, power hooked up. Then I'm just going to bump this and notice how this arm is going back. So there's two springs that are pulling it this way. And so we're trying to relieve the tension off those springs. So now that it's all the way back in its stroke, the two springs have relieved the pressure on them and that's going to allow us to get to this bolt a little bit easier. But since I've also have moved the motor crank, I can now easily just push this arm forward and I can now easily get to that Allen wrench right here. So uh, with the Allen wrench, I'm going to loosen this bolt and then uh, that'll allow us to take the front part off of this cable. Okay. So now that I've uh, completely taken out this uh, stripper bolt with the 532nd Allen, um, now we can start loosening some other pieces to further disassemble this cable. Uh, so I'm just going to set these aside for now and you'll need a half inch wrench and we're going to loosen these uh, nuts right here and that will allow us to remove this side of the cable. And so I'll go ahead and do that right now. Takes a half inch wrench. So once you loosen this backside, it'll allow you to pull the cable. And then there's a little slot down here where the cable will actually come out of. And so now the next step is we're gonna undo this one, same way. Just loosen it. Undo the nut on the inside. And then once you back it out all the way, you can see where that cable just slips out right there. Okay. So now uh, we need to get to the front of the cable, which the loop is at. And to do that, we are going to need to open the front cap of the machine. So the next step is to get this to this loop, which is uh, attached around the motor crank. And to get to that portion, we need to take these uh, four bolts out that hold this front cap on. 
So it takes a half inch wrench, or in my case, I'm using a impact with a half inch socket. And I'm just gonna loosen these and remove this front cap. So I've got the two bottom ones out and I've loosened the two top ones. It allows you to lift this up. Um, so now that you can see the next step where we're going to is this crank motor crank right here. That's the other end of the cable. And so we're going to remove that. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. We're just going to push it forward on that groove and it'll pop out. But to make it easier, where I can bring this out, this motor crank out to the front, I'm just going to go around to the, the push button side and, and run the motor just by pushing the push button. So let me uh, hold this open so you can kind of see where I'm going with it. So I'm just going to bump the push button, and that's moving the motor crank more forward so we can access it a lot easier. And then you can still rotate this arm around to get it out of your way. So now since this is in front, we can easily access this cable and get it out. And so all you need to do is just hold it by this portion right here. And then I put my fingers on the back side to open this loop up and it should just pop right off. Just like that and then you can remove now your entire cable all right so now we're just gonna put in a new cable and we're just gonna do all those same steps but just in reverse and get this new cable back in so we have our cable that we're going to reinstall so you're gonna just come to the front here's your loop you're just gonna set it over the top of this you're gonna push forward on it to open that loop up and try to expand it. If you can't uh, do it you, with your hands, you can uh, use a screwdriver to help pry it over, but just be careful, don't damage your uh, cable. Okay, so I got it on. And then I'm just gonna put this inside and have it go out the back. Okay, and so now I'm going to bump the motor so that it is opposite of where it's at right now. Uh, so we want it 180 from this position. So I'm just gonna bump the motor to do that. Okay, you got your crank 180. Now we can close up this front cap. So I'm just gonna put our bolts back in. And there's two ways you can do it. Uh, you can do it where if you've got long enough fingers, you can uh, put the bolt in your fingers like so and reach up inside and try to manipulate them on there with your fingers. But if you can't, you can come in through the back side, reach your hand up inside here, and then get your, your nuts on the bolts this way. So now you would just tighten those up and then we'll come back to the back side and uh, finish installing the cable on the back so side. Now that you've got the front loop on, the motor crank, and then your, your front cover back bolted together, now we can come back here to the back and reinstall on the back side. So you're going to basically have four to five threads showing here on this outside of this thread. And then you're going to take your wire and kind of push it up through that slot. Uh, put your nut on the inside when you do that, and then you'll just poke the the, the threaded end of the cable back in there, and then just uh, tighten your nut on the back side in inside here. 
And so you'll have about four to five threads showing on this outside. And then you're gonna snug this down with your half inch wrench. Okay, so now we're gonna take the other end of the cable and we're gonna go through this portion of it. So I'm putting the wire through in the retaining nut and start threading it on. And on this side, the uh, approximate location is um, you want the cable to be just going through this nut, uh, the threaded portion. You should see just a little bit of the threaded portion coming through this nut. So I've got to adjust this a little bit. So we got just a little bit showing there. Now I'm gonna snug this part. Okay. And so now the last step is to uh, re-secure your stripper bolt uh, that takes the 532nd Allen uh, back uh, to its threaded hole that's up here. So our last step is to get this uh, stripper bolt uh, back attached to the uh, pivoting arm. And so uh, there's two sides to this. You have a side that's been countersunk just a little bit. So make sure that you put the stripper side through the, the countersunk side. That way the bolt kind of sits flush inside there. Uh, so then at that point, we'll take that and we're going to thread it up onto into this arm. There's a hole there that has threads. Uh, one thing uh, that you can do is use your hand to bring this closer so that when you go to screw this in, uh, it will it'll be a, le a little easier for you. But if you're finding it's hard to do it, one easy thing you can do is just grab a clamp and then you can push this where you, where you want it and clamp it. Now you can use uh, both hands to attach your your cable into that thread. Make sure you do not um, strip your threads because then it's a whole nother process. You'll have to order a new part, probably new piece of this to, uh, to replace it if you strip that bolt out. So make sure you can just hand screw it in uh, when you're doing it. Make sure you got it hand screwed in all the way and then you can tighten it. So that's 532nd Allen. Just gonna tighten it pretty tight don't go super crazy uh, but get get it tight all right so now we got that tight now I can release this and it's gonna fire back a little bit and now it's done everything is replaced and when you turn on your toggle switch you should be able to uh, have this come around So now that we have your cable reinstalled, uh, we will reinstall the main spring. Uh, in order to do that, you want to uh, make sure your throwing arm is straight out. So uh, in order to do that, you can just push your firing button with your toggle switch down, and then it'll start moving the arm, and then you can just rotate the arm so it's straight out. So now that it's straight out, when you look inside the machine, There's a little tab that your spring attaches to. The tab right, right there is what we're gonna hook the spring into. Make sure you don't get under hooked with this cable that you just installed. You wanna go above it, so. I'm gonna put the, the spring in through that little eyelet, like so. And then I'm gonna take the, the spade bolt um, and put it through this hole. Again, making sure I'm not interwound with that cable. You wanna be above it. So I'm putting it out the front, putting our uh, thread protector over that, and then installing your, your blue knot.
All right, and so this sets your, your tension of how far your throwing distance is. So the tighter you get it, the further it's gonna throw. You can tighten it up till it bottoms out on the spring, uh, or you can have it just loose enough where you're throwing about a 60, 65 yard target. <clears throat> so now that your spring is installed, uh, if you hook it up to power now, uh, your machine will be armed and cocked. So at this point, I would uh, put it back in your trap house, mount it securely to uh, wherever you had it, a cart or a base, um, before you turn it on and cycle it because you don't want to risk it falling off your table or something like that. Uh, so that's how to install the spring.